Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look at a new time saver, how to transform formulas. All right, to basically solve for whatever we want. We have to remember the property of equality. Whatever you do to one side of an equation or an inequality, you have to do to the other side. So for example, if we add an x to the left side, we have to add an x to the y side. Keep it balanced. All right, so how this is going to work with formulas. It's a little bit different than when you've got numbers involved. So if I wanted to solve this formula, which is the area of a rectangle is the length times the width, I'm going to solve for the width. That means I'm going to try and get W completely by itself. This is length times width, or L times W. So to get W by itself, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by L, divided by L. The L's will cancel out, and I'll be left with W by itself. So the area divided by the length is equal to the width. All right? So that's how I was able to solve for the value of W. I don't know what W is. I don't know what A is. I don't know what L is. I mean, area, length, width. I mean, I know that, but I don't know what those numbers are. I just know that this way, it's set up so that I'm solving for the width. If I were asked to solve for the length, I do something very similar, length times width. So I'd need to divide both sides by W. The W's would cancel out. So the area divided by the width is equal to the length. All right. So I've gone ahead and shown a little bit of how to isolate a variable. I've done the width. Now I'm isolating the length by itself, or I'm transforming the formula. So. Here's an example of how that could work with a word problem. I've traveled 158 miles from my house to a place that's 158 miles from my house. If it took me 10 hours to go that distance or this distance, what is my rate? So I'm going to start off by canceling out anything that's just worthless information. And I'm going to identify I am using this equation, the distance rate time equation. All right. This question is asking about a distance, a rate, and a time. So I'm going to go ahead and use the distance rate time formula. Now, the question is asking, what is my rate? So I want to rearrange the formula to solve for my rate. So I'm going to arrange the formula to solve for my rate. Whoops. And to do that, I divide both sides of this by t. t cancels out. And I'm left with the distance divided by the time is equal to the rate. Okay. Now I'm going to substitute in. I've traveled 158 miles. So my distance is equal to 158. So I'm going to get rid of D. Goodbye, D. And replace it with 158. My time is 10 hours. So I'm going to replace the time with 10. Get rid of time here, 158 divided by 10 will give me 15.8, and that is equal to my rate. So the rate of travel, how fast I'm going, I'm going 15.8 um, miles per hour. All right. So again, this helped me to be able to arrange my formula, being that the rate is the distance divided by the time, and I can solve for my rate. So basically, does that save us any time? All right. Rearranging the equation, um, it seems like a little bit of extra work at the beginning, work with variables. So let's go ahead and take a look at if this actually make solving questions a little bit easier. I'm just going to show you an example of a question. And I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. So how much money would I need to invest to earn 100 or to earn $50 in interest at 5% interest rate after one year, two years, three years, and five years? That's my equation. The interest amount is equal to the principal that you invest. So what we're asking is how much would I need to invest? We're trying to solve for the value of P times the rate times the time. If I just go ahead and substitute, or sorry, there's two different ways here. 
Oops, I'm going to look at it two different ways. One is that I'm going to substitute in the values, and two is that I'm going to change the formula and then put in the values. So let's go ahead and, and do this. So the first way is that I'm going to substitute in the values. I know interest is $50, that's the amount I'm looking for. My rate is 5%, and the time I'm going to first substitute in is one year. So I would substitute that in, multiply the 0 0.05 times 1 times P on the right side of the equation. Then I'm going to need to divide both sides by 0 0.05 so I can isolate my value of P, get P by itself. These two will cancel each other out leaving me with 50 divided by 0 0.05 on the left and P by itself on the right. And then I solve for that and 50 divided by 0 0.05 is equal to P. That's my principal amount. All right. So I've solved one, two, three, four, five steps to solve. If I invest $1,000 for one year at 5%, I will get $50 of interest. But now I have to go back and do that for two years, three years, and five years. And if I'm using the first method of just plugging in the values and going, I have to go back to the beginning, back to ground zero, and start over with t being equal to 2. So I'm going to do all those same exact steps over and over and over to get my solution. Then I'm going to go back to ground zero and start with t being equal to 3 and do those same steps over and over and over and over. And then I'm going to go back to ground zero one more time to substitute the value of t being equal to 5. And I'm going to do those same steps over and over and over and over to find out if I invested $200 for five years, I would earn $50 interest. All right. Now, the solving the equation is not nearly as important as understanding that this method takes a whole lot longer. All right. What I'm actually trying to do here is show you that this would take forever. Every time I add in, oh, what about 10 years? Oh, now I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board, substitute in 10 for the value of P or T, and solve all the way through. Every single time I'm going to have to do these same steps, a lot of steps. Now, what if I change the formula first and then substitute the values? So here's my formula, same exact question. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by RT so that I can get P by itself. So now I've rearranged the equation, or the formula, I'm sorry, to being the interest divided by the rate times the time is equal to the principal amount, how much I'm going to invest. So let's take that equation now and apply it to all four of these. Watch how quick we can do this. When we have all the numbers on the left and our unknown variable on the right, we can set these up, the things that we know, right away. The only thing I'm going to change from question to question is that t value. And I'm not going to have to change it very much. Change it from one year. Now I multiply 50 divided by 0 0.5 times 1 gives me 1,000. Pretty quick. Next one. Let's substitute the value of 2 in for t. 50 divided by 0 0.05 times 2 gives me 500. All right. Now let's do the next one. Three years. I substitute in the value of 3 for t. Now again, whether you understand how to use the principal rate interest equation isn't as important as the fact that look at how much time I can save. Boom. I substitute that in and I get that the principal is equal to 200. I get exactly the same answers, only I get them a whole lot faster. And that is why we rearrange formulas. We rearrange formulas to solve for what we're trying to solve for so that every single time I don't have to go through those same five or six steps to get it to that point where I'm going to actually be here. All right? In the previous method, it took us about three steps just to get here. In this method, that's our first step. Boom, put in that amount for time. Time's the only thing changing. Let's get everything else organized, change the time. All right? And that's how it works. So. After all of that, you can see that this really is a huge time saver. Being able to transform and be comfortable moving formulas around is going to save you a little bit of time. You arrange the, the equation or the formula first, then you change the variables. This is a way for us to work a little bit smarter and not have to do quite as much math 
It also helps simplify so that we're not making as many mistakes. We have less area to make mistakes, which is always wonderful. 